myself. Uh, I'm uh, Sushan Ru. I'm currently uh, a postdoc working with Dr. Erin Lawrence on soybean uh, genomic selection. And prior to that, I worked with Dr. Rex Bernardo uh, on developing breeding methods using targeted recombination. Uh, so today I will be your host for the first half of the workshop. And um, Prabhin, do you want to introduce yourself briefly? Yeah, sure. Hi, everyone. My name is Prabhin, and I'm a postdoc with Dr. Jim Anderson. I primarily work uh, with intermediate wheatgrass or Kernza, Kernza breeding, but I also work a little bit with wheat, uh, primarily breeding and genomics aspect. And this is the first time I'm, um, I guess, uh, giving a workshop on on tassel, especially at the university here. So very excited uh, that you know, you've joined us today. So hopefully it'll be a good one for you and you can learn a few things from this workshop. Thank you, Pepin. So yeah, just like Previn said, I also view this workshop as an opportunity for us to communicate uh, what we know about TESOL. So uh, the knowledge we share are not necessar necessarily the best. If you uh, know better than us then, or you have better solutions, feel free to share with uh, the group. Uh, also, if you uh, spot any mistakes, please uh, let us know uh, anytime during the workshop. Um, so for those of you who are not very familiar with TESO, it is a very powerful tool designed for a wide range of analysis uh, for association study, bioinformatics, and evolutionary analysis. And this tool um, was developed by the Buckler Lab at Cornell University. And um, so what can TASO do? It, it really, it really is really powerful and it has a lot of functions. Uh, I summarized the, some key functionalities. And the first thing is uh, it can handle uh, genotype and phenotype data editing. For example, it allows to uh, convert file formats from one to another. Uh, it enables merging, sorting, filtering of phenotypic and genotypic data. It also has the function to transform phenotypic data uh, for uh, your analysis. And another major function is for data imputation. It has uh, some uh, several algorithms for in impute missing genotypic data, such as uh, uh, LDK and I, some numerical algorithms and uh, some other uh, more sophisticated options. And uh, a third major function is genetic analysis, uh, uh, such as uh, analyzing diversity, relatedness, and uh, studying the association between genotype and phenotype. Uh, through GWAS or genomic selection. Uh, on top of that, TESO also enables uh, some pipelines, uh, such as for genotyping by sequencing or GBS. It has the GBS v2 pipeline uh, for a species with a reference genome and unique pipeline for species without reference genome. Uh, it also has a pipeline developed for pan genome analysis uh, to build the pan genome uh, using pan A. So uh, in today's workshop, for the sake of time, we uh, won't be able to go through all the functions, uh, but we'll focus on three major uh, directions. One is file conversion, the other part is data imputation, and the third part will, uh, uh, Prabhin will lead on functions for genetic analysis. So this is uh, the schedule or the structure of this workshop. Uh, for the first half, I will be leading uh, to introduce you some basic, uh, uh, basic uh, structures or uh, available resources and also uh, for TESOL and also data conversion and imputation. And after the break, uh, Prabhu will lead our uh, analysis using LD, PCA, Kinship, and GWAS. Towards the very end, we'll have a Q&A and also we'll wrap up this workshop. And although we, we designate 
dedicated some time for Q&A in the end, but if you have question uh, during each session, you're welcome to ask us anytime. So first of all, um, for this workshop, uh, we created a GitHub page uh, to uh, host some uh, information for you to use. And one thing is, uh, I'll open this link. Okay, this is the GitHub page. And if you click on the link, you should be able to see the main page. And there's some basic in, uh, instruction of this workshop. And on top of it, there's sample data. So for today's practice, um, we uh, designed some very uh, easy hands-on exercises for you. And so today's practice, it's, uh, will be nice for you to download this sample data ahead of time. Uh, uh, and it's, uh, so you can do it uh, either now or right before the exercise. And also, I also shared some R script in the file conversion folder. Um, if you're interested, you're welcome to check it out after this workshop. And we are also planning to uh, upload uh, all the slides for this workshop to GitHub page so that after the workshop, if you have questions, you can go back uh, to the slides and find answers you need. So that's the GitHub page. And also, uh, before we run uh, Tesla, we need to install it first. And this is the link for Tesla homepage. And it has some useful information here. Um, you can find the latest version of Tesla uh, in this part. And to in install, it's uh, relatively straightforward. Uh, you pick the version that's correct for that fits your environment. And uh, for me, I use the Windows one and click it, download it, and then was uh, it's uh, downloaded, just click the icon again and follow the, uh, the uh, instructions and it will be installed on Windows. Uh, I haven't done it on Mac or Unix yet, uh, but if you encounter any questions, so there's a, a getting started instruction. So it has a very detailed instruction for installation on different environment. Um, also on this uh, homepage, there's other resources that's available and uh, this, uh, please feel free to check it out. Um, this is a good place uh, to find out more updates and information about TASO. Uh, and another useful resource is the wiki page. So uh, this, this page hosts the latest user manual and some other um, support information. Uh, so uh, to use the user manual, just click this link here. It will show you the latest manual and it's basically there's for users, there's some general um, support documents, uh, for example, to uh, install Tesla and to uh, open the graphic interface, uh, etc. And below that, um, the menu is organized by functionalities. Uh, for example, the file uh, functions, data functions, and uh, so on and so forth. So you can, uh, it's pretty straightforward to find the function you need here and click on the link, there will be instruction for that. Uh, on top of the uh, documents, there, uh, there are also some very useful YouTube uh, videos available for uh, Tassel. Uh, so you can simply click on this link or search for Buckler Lab on YouTube and there, you will be able to find uh, some nice uh, Tassel tutorials. And, so if you cannot find the answer you need from um, about resources, there's also a very useful uh, resource uh, that's Tesla Google Group. So uh, this is a link for that. Um, this group 
in this group, people raise questions, post questions they have uh, during the use of Tassel, and the de developers are very helpful and very good at replying those questions. So if you have questions you cannot find, find answer in the manual, you're welcome to search this site for the old questions people have uh, already asked and have been addressed, or you, will, uh, you can post your own question. Usually, like from my own experience, I posted one question, usually within a day or two, I get answer from the developer, which is quite nice. So those are the resources uh, I know of for Tassel, and hopefully you will be able to find a lot of helpful tips for using Tassel and for your own analysis. So then uh, let's move on the, to file conversion, uh, the first part of this workshop. And first of all, uh, and like I mentioned, we'll have a very easy hands-on exercise, exercise towards the middle of it. And it will be nice if you have the sample data available and have uh, Tassel running on your computer. But in case you don't, uh, don't worry about it. You just uh, move along with the presentation uh, and you can uh, revisit the exercise after the workshop. So uh, you might be wondering why do we need to talk about file? Uh, conversion. So uh, for a genotypic file, there are different formats, uh, such as HapMap, VCF, Plain, Flapjack, and different softwares might use uh, require different format. And if you need to do various analysis using various software, uh, it, it is very common to uh, have a need to convert one file format to another. Uh, so during the uh, HapMap, VCF, Plink, and Flapjack, and uh, several other formats are all supported by Tassel. So, uh, but during today's uh, workshop, we'll uh, mainly focus on uh, HapMap and the VCF uh, uh, for two or three major reasons. Uh, the first reason is this HapMap and VCF are very common uh, genotypic file uh, formats um, generated from different uh, genotyping pipelines. And also they are very um, common input format for different softwares. For, for example, some database tools or imputation tools, they usually require either HapMap or VCF. And the third reason is once we know the flow to convert between these two formats, it's pretty uh, similar to do it for other formats as well. So a little bit uh, introduction on HapMap. Um, HapMap uh, stands for haplotype map. It was uh, initially developed for the HapMap project, I believe in the beginning of 2000, uh, in 2001, uh, many years ago. And after that project, it had been uh, used to very commonly to in, uh, store genotypic data. And so HapMap file is a text file. It uh, always ends with uh, hmp.txt. And if you see a, a tab map file, you can open it and view it using some text editor tools such as Notepad++. Um, and in the tab map, tab map file, there are, some, uh, there are 11 columns on the left that is common to all uh, tab map files. Uh, for example, the RS uh, pound sign column, it stands for SNP ID. And alleles column, it stands for uh, reference and alternate allele. Uh, and chrome is the uh, number of the chromosome. Position is the physical position and um, so on and so forth. So the rest of the 11 columns are additional information of the reads. And if you don't have those uh, information, you can simply leave them uh, in A, that would do. Um, and after the 11 columns, there's additional columns for each individual that is genotyped. Um, 
and each row is one marker locus. So uh, to show you an example of uh, HapMap file, this is uh, the data, one, one file in the sample data. And uh, as you see, it ends with hmp.txt. Uh, and I can open it with a notepad. So this is how it looks. Um, just as we showed in the slide, slides. And so the other, uh, oh, okay. So for the genotype part, uh, there are two different coding systems. Uh, one coding system is simply list the uh, nucleotide for the two, uh, two alleles. Uh, for example, if there's one A, um, one G, and you just say, or just list A, G, and A, A, G, G, T, C, and uh, very straightforward. And the other coding system is to use one single letter to represent different genotypes. And this is, uh, if, uh, this is the chart here. And also in TASO, uh, uh, on the uh, side panel, it also shows uh, how TESO uh, convert uh, between this uh, two letter system to this one letter system. And, uh, and if you want to find out more details of, about HapMap, um, you can simply Google it uh, or use this uh, document as I pr provided here. It pr uh, has pretty uh, detailed information on HapMap. So the other very commonly used uh, format is VCF. Um, so VCF files, it always ends with .vcf, and it can also be uh, opened and viewed uh, using Notepad++ or other text editors. So once you open a VCF, there's always uh, uh, lines on, on the very top, uh, starting with two pound signs, and that uh, contains mat information line. So um, this, uh, during these lines, um, we can find information about the, uh, the format, uh, syntax of the VCF file, and also some content uh, information. And after the mat information line, there is a header line, um, and just, uh, uh, for uh, column names, and after that, there's data lines. So very similar to HapMap file, VCF also contains the column for chrome, chrome line, position, ID, uh, the marker ID, reference allele, and alternate allele. So uh, different from HapMap, in HapMap, the allele is one column, uh, but in VCF, a reference and alternative alleles are two columns. And also uh, after that, there is some additional information on quality, uh, whether the marker is filtered or now not, uh, and inform additional information in the format of the data. And after that, there is also like additional columns for each individual that's in, that's genotypes, uh, genotyped, and so each individual will occupy one column. So to show you an example, uh, we have this VCF file here. I can right click and open it with Notepad. And this is how the uh, VCF file looks like. Okay. Um, so uh, TASO can, if you have a HapMap file and you want to convert it to VCF, TASO can do the conversion conversion and vice versa. And also, whatever file format is supported by TASL, it can convert it to another uh, file format supported by TASL. So um, the conversion is quite straightforward. Uh, you just need to open TASL and, uh, and then open the file, during the file uh, drop down menu, Op click open or open S, uh, and then you click choose the file you want to open and then save as, uh, uh, using save as to save it into the specific format that you need. Uh, so I'll uh, show you how uh, it's done in TASO. So 
I have installed Tassel here. I just find Tassel 5, click it. And uh, for most part of the workshop today, we'll be using the um, graphic interface. And uh, towards the very end, if uh, we have time, I will show you how we can use Tassel in command line. Um, so this is the interface for Tassel, is how it's organized. Um, and there are four major panels. I will go over the functions later on. Uh, the functions are organized on the top uh, uh, menu, the function menu. And uh, to open a file, we can click on file and open. And so I just choose the HapMap file uh, I have here and click open. And then it will show you the genotypic data. So as you see, once I open the file, uh, you can see the some some functions of the panels. Uh, the top left panel shows the data tree. So if I open another file, it will be added here to the tree. It just shows all the files or data sets that's opened by Tassel. And, and then the second uh, panel on the left list some information about the data. For, for this example, it shows uh, the number of uh, individuals genotyped is 139, and the number of markers is 3,200. And it also shows you some uh, uh, additional information about uh, chromosomes and also uh, what the code stands for. So in Tesla, it used one letter coding system and uh, uh, it shows you what each letter means. And then on, on the bottom left, this panel is to is a uh, progress panel. If you run analysis, it will show the progress bar for that analysis. And on the uh, right, this uh, major panel shows the content of the data set. If, uh, since we're opening uh, a genotypic data file, it shows the genotype of that data set. And it's organized by, um, so each row represents one line that's genotyped and each column stands for uh, marker, each a uh, single marker locus. And uh, it's by default, it shows the very middle of the genome uh, and you can go to different places of the genome, uh, simply just slide this bar here. It, you can also enter the physical position you wanna go to in this box here. And uh, also there's some viewing uh, uh, options here. It, you can color the alleles based on minor, major allele, or only major alleles, minor alleles, or some other uh, some other uh, coloring uh, methods. So you're welcome to play around. It's quite straightforward. So now if we want to um, convert the HapMap data into BCF, we simply, first we select the data we want to convert, and then we go back to file and save as. So we can provide the name. If you click browse, then I can go to this folder and I'll just write down the name Tassel uh, now three. VCF and click save. And here I choose the file format I want to uh, save and I click OK. So you see the progress bar uh, just for a second, it's very quick. And then see in this folder I have uh, this new VCF file. Now I can check it using notepad, yeah, so that's it. And I can do the same thing for uh, to change VCF file to have map. So now um, it's, it's your turn to uh, 
to exercise uh, how to do the file conversion. So um, you know, if you have the sample HeadMap file, uh, please open it with Tassel and save it as a VCF file just for your exercise. And after, if you have extra time, you can uh, do that again to open the VCF file and save it as VCF. And uh, I'll, we'll leave uh, maybe three to five minutes for you, uh, or after you're done, uh, let me know or uh, raise your hand. Uh, we can move on to the next part. Feel free to speak up if you have any questions. There was one question about um, why do I want to use a VCF file in the oh, chat? Yeah, yeah, sure. <clears throat> so, um, for example, we, um, if you want to uh, do imputation in Beagle or some other software, it requires VCF. So, it's um, especially for some uh, Java based tools or some a lot of bioinformatics tools, it takes VCF. And also, uh, you don't have to uh, start with uh, HeadMap and convert it to VCF. But if you have VCF, usually if it's GBS data or some other uh, 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 next generation sequencing data, usually it, it comes with a VCF file format. And uh, oftentimes, you need to convert it to some other format for analysis. For example, if you want to do this analysis in R, and um, it could be like convenient if you convert VCF file into HeadMap. Uh, it will, it's usually e easier to handle with HeadMap uh, other than VCF. So uh, yeah, it depends on the, the type of analysis you use. Uh, do and also the uh, format that's required by the software. Um, I'm also going to add one thing. VCF usually stores more information than other, say, HapMap or other file formats. It will typically have your allelic depth, your um, number of reads per allele or, you know, for the whole sample, that kind of depth, genotype equality. So if you want to do further filtering later on, it's much easier to stick with VCF. Uh, then just like a, a numeric or, you know, or a half map file. And like Shushan said, most SNP callers these days give you 
a VCF file and you can just stick with it throughout and maybe at the very end, once you've done with filtering implication, then convert to some a nucleotide format or a numeric format for use in other programs. Yeah, thanks for that, Previn. So are there reasons to file, another question uh, from Nico is, uh, are there reasons to file in a com compatible format will not load, upload or convert properly? If so will there be a prompt or an error readout? That's a great question. Um, I haven't encountered that myself. Uh, if uh, there's a, a um, problem, yeah, that's a good question. Um, one, one very common error that I make is if I'm um, not careful, there's like a typo somewhere, um, um, or even actually the one I, I can remember right now is, let's say you were trying to import a HapMap file in Tassel, and instead of, I think, N, N, N or NAN, something like that, if, if the missing value is not coded properly, Tassel would throw an error, it also tell you your file format is wrong if the positions are not sorted. So when you import the file, there's a, a like a, a radio button to sort the positions and that usually takes care of that issue. But mostly it's typo and anything that um, the format isn't compatible with. But other than that, I think um, it mostly goes fairly smoothly. Yeah, thank you, Previn. Um, yeah, I see. Uh, how, do, does anyone need more time for for this exercise, or we're all good? Yep. I saw some sum ups. Uh, so let's move on. So uh, one thing uh, with um, one thing uh, special with Tasso is that uh, the, in the access we convert HapMap to this file, but um, you uh, sometimes you might notice like after the conversion, um, the reference and alternate allele columns in the VSAT file don't do not match the original order of alleles in the HapMap file. So what Tesla thinks is that in HapMap file it does not specify uh, reference or alter alternative allele. So it considers there is no specific order. So it reassigns uh, reference and alternate allele during the conversion. So for example, if the if if there is an order, if you think when you generate a HapMap file or when uh, another genotyping uh, service provider generate the HapMap file, if the, there is uh, an order and the first one, for example, the first one uh, refers to the reference and the last second one re refer to the alternate allele. And it's it, uh, possible that uh, when you convert it to a VCF file, the order could change. Uh, so that's uh, just some default setting of Tesla that cannot be modified. So, um, just uh, when when you do the conversion between HapMap and to VCF, just uh, be uh, careful uh, and uh, be aware that the reference and alternate allele orders might change uh, based on allele frequency. And if usually for the for genomic selection analysis for the specific data set, it should not matter. But if it does matter for your analysis. Uh, make sure to pay attention to that. And the best practice would be if that make uh, it, if that um, affect your analysis, it's the best to go from this direction from VCF file to head map uh, or from VCF to other format uh, other than to uh, from start from head map to VCF or to, from head map to other format. So uh, just to bear in mind, if you start with HapMap file, uh, use caution and to uh, make sure 
whether the uh, order of the alleles matter for your analysis. So uh, another uh, uh, thing you might encounter is sometimes we uh, do have HEPMAP or BCF file available from our genotype data, but sometimes we don't. And sometimes the data comes in CSV file or some text other text file, and but if you want to do uh, uh, want to use some uh, bioinformatics tools or uh, like computational tools, and we we need to have HapMap or VCF file format. Uh, uh, what do we do? So uh, one easy way is uh, uh, we can do it manually to convert the uh, CSV file or Excel. Uh, Excel file into HapMap. Uh, so basically, you can just um, write down, like add columns to your data in the same as uh, the column with the same column names as uh, required in HapMap. And for the columns you don't have information on, just leave them as NA. And then once you have this CSV file, you can then copy and paste it, or you can uh, just directly save it as the text file, just using hmp.txt in the very end. So that HapMap file should be acceptable for uh, TESOL. But uh, TESOL, the uh, one way TESO is very good for file conversion is that it, uh, uh, if we do a conversion this way, it uh, TESO accepts this file. But some uh, there are some uh, software and uh, it's more strict on file format. Uh, so we do if we do the conversion manually, some software might not uh, support that have met file we converted. But if we run it through TASEL, so we open this file in TASEL and save it as another HEPMAP file or VCF file, that format is more reliable. It can be, uh, should be supported by other software as well. So, uh, and then once you have the HEPMAP file and you want to use it in R or you want to do some, uh, uh, analysis like uh, save it as a CSV file, you can simply just open that uh, HeadMap file, uh, copy paste uh, to save it as CSV file. Or uh, if you have other text editor, you can directly save it as CSV file. And that can be later uh, used in R or some other software. Um, so HEPMAP file is like compared to VCF, it's easier to handle and easier to uh, work on. Uh, the other option is if we have uh, uh, data in CSV or text format uh, in this simple format, I call it uh, simple format. And so basically it has the SNP ID, problem, position, reference, and altern alternative value. And then uh, there's columns for genotypes. And say if we have the a AABB system, and if we use A as the reference value and B to represent alternative value. So if we have some data like this, um, I uh, have some, I wrote some uh, R functions to uh, convert this simple format into head map or convert it into VCF. So um, uh, if you need like uh, start with VCF file and you can use the R functions to do the conversion. And um, I'll show you how to do that using the uh, script uh, towards the end if we have time. So now, uh, any other questions for file conversion? I saw another question here. Um, what if you have SNP data that does not have location information? Can you just assign an arbitrary order? Um, if so, I'm not, uh, 
100% sure if uh, this is the best solution, but if you just want to do analysis in Tesla and you don't care about the position, um, it's, uh, I, I would say just to uh, manage to open the file in Tesla, uh, it works if you just as assign uh, some numbers, arbitrary numbers, but um, just be careful if you need that information for any analysis and uh, that might be a problem, but uh, if not, it should be sufficient to uh, get the file uploaded to TESOL. So yeah, any other questions? Yeah, and Praveen also answered that question uh, for us too. Yeah, so if we don't have further questions, I'll move on imputation and this is probably something uh, some of you are interested. And um, so why do we need to do imputation? Um, when we get the genotypic data from either GBS, SNP array, or some other platform, it is very common to have missing genotypic data. And it's almost always uh, will encounter some missing genotypic data. And for GBS, the missing data is, uh, um, the ratio is, uh, can be uh, higher than SNP array. And, um, so some uh, software, uh, for example, some uh, tools for genomic selection or GWAS do not handle missing data. So that's one reason why we, why we need to do the imputation to be able to use those uh, uh, tools uh, in, in, instead of removing markers with any uh, missing data we can use most of the markers uh, uh, after uh, do, doing the imputation. And uh, if we can do uh, the imputation accurately, that will allow us to uh, richly improve uh, the marker, increase the marker density, and that will uh, um, in turn allow us to do more accurate association analysis or genomic selection and analysis. So um, TASO supports uh, quite a few imputation algorithms. Uh, for example, LD, it has this function for LD, K, N, and I. It is an uh, algorithm that's based on K nearest neighbor approach. It's very fast and simple to use. Um, so the, in today's workshop, we'll mainly focusing a little be mainly focusing on LD, KN, and I imputation. And the nice thing, one nice thing about this uh, algorithm is it does not require moder markers to be ordered. So uh, as Nico mentioned, if there's no position information, you can still um, do imputation using LD, KN, KN and I uh, algorithm. And also, it does not require physical or genetic maps, uh, which is usually required by most imputation tools. So uh, to sum up, this strategy is very fast uh, and very convenient to use. And the accuracy uh, depends on your data. Uh, uh, it's like good overall. Um, so this is, if you want to find more information about this algorithm, this is the reference for it. And uh, in TASO, it also offers the reference for uh, LD, KN, and, and I. And there are some other algorithms supported by TASO. Um, it supports numerical imputation, either by mean or by K nearest neighbors. And for the sake of time, we won't go through uh, numerical imputation, but it's very straightforward to use in TESOL. And once we uh, are familiar with LD, KN, and I, I, 
it would be very similar to run numerical imputation. And, but uh, if you can do LDK and, and I, my impression is uh, the accuracy should be uh, higher uh, uh, than numerical imputation. But uh, not sure about k-nearest neighbors though. Uh, so uh, you, you're, uh, it's nice to explore different uh, algorithms that you need. And the other thing with numerical imputation is that um, some, using some other algorithms, uh, you might still have some missing data after imputation. Um, but if you want to use like a tool, a genomic selection software that requires no missing data, you can, after you impute with some other algorithms, you can run it through numerical imputation again so that there won't be any missing data left and, and that data is ready to go for uh, downstream analysis. And on top of uh, these two algorithms, uh, there's also fill-in or and FSF-HAP algorithms uh, uh, developed in TESOL. The fill-in is uh, more developed for uh, uh, diversity panels with inbred lines or some other more general population structure. And FSF HAP is specifically designed for biparental populations. Um, and the reason I uh, won't go over details for these two uh, algorithms in this workshop is that um, personally, I prefer using Beagle uh, rather than using these two algorithms in TESOL if you want to do some more sophisticated imputation. Uh, one reason is Beagle is a very classic imputation tool and um, it provides very good accuracy and um, very reliable. And also uh, the other major reason is that um, the support information uh, for these two uh, approaches filling in as FSF HAP is not, uh, in my own opinion, is not uh, that well developed in the TESOL community uh, and, and also in the user manual. So you might encounter uh, a lot of questions how to use these two algorithms. And I personally tried both, and there's still like some uh, problems like. I was not able to solve uh, after going through all the uh, resources I can find and also on the uh, uh, TESO Google group. So um, to achieve a similar, if not better accuracy, uh, uh, I would uh, recommend, strongly recommend uh, to use Beagle instead. Uh, if you're comfortable with running command line tools. Uh, it's a very straightforward, very powerful tool for more uh, sophisticated imputation. Um, yeah, Any, anything to add or? Uh, so, so for today's workshop, we'll uh, demonstrate how to use the LDKNNI algorithm and uh, uh, there are two purposes. One is to show you how to in, uh, impute, and the other one is to show you how to calculate uh, imputation accuracy. So you might have the question, like as I went through different algorithms, you might have the question, which one should I use? And one easy way to find out is to um, do a little test on your data and to calculate the uh, imputation accuracy. And based on that, you will should have a better idea which algorithm provides better accuracy for your data. So first of all, let's go uh, to uh, go through the steps uh, to use LDK and I for imputation. Um, so once we open a file in a genotypic data file in TASL, and we can uh, select that uh, data set. And then we can go to the impute drop down menu and choose LDK and I imputation. And then that will um, prompt us to provide some uh, parameter values. 
not, uh, a after that done, we can click OK. And so that's uh, as simple as that. And so I will just show you. Since we have already opened uh, NAM3 dataset, it's a clicked, it's selected. And so I will go to impute and choose LDKNNI imputation. So for uh, this exercise, and when I used it, I just used the default uh, set parameters and it, it works well for or for this data set. But if you wanna find out more about the meaning for this parameter, you can click help menu. It has the definition uh, and the range of values for each parameter. And uh, you're welcome to play around. Uh, so uh, for now, I just use the default and I click okay. You see the progress bar here. It takes a couple of seconds to run. And after it's done, we'll have this uh, imputed uh, data. So previously there is some missing data here uh, in white. And this is after imputation. So very quick. Uh, and then as I mentioned, to know how good the imputation is, it's important to uh, calculate the accuracy. So uh, in order to calculate accuracy, it's a kind of a separate step uh, from doing the actual imputation. The first thing is we need to like, uh, the same uh, as, same as doing imputation, we need to select the data we want to test. And then we need to mask some data points. So the idea is we mask some data points where we know what's the real genotype. And then we do imputation. Then after imputation, we compare um, the imputed genotype or do they match with the real genotype? And that's how we calculate the accuracy. So we can mask genotype. Uh, using the mask genotype function under the data dropdown menu. And then we can specify the percentage of genotypic data we mask. By the default is uh, 0.01, uh, it's 1% uh, of the genotype da genotypic data that's masked. And minimum depth is uh, if you have uh, the depth information, it can select uh, uh, the any selectively to mask the data above certain depths to give you a better uh, confidence. But since in this data, we don't have depth information, we just use the default zero and then click OK. After that, uh, it will generate a masked file. And then you impute the masked file using uh, LDK and I or any other algorithms you want to test. You will get another imputed file. So it uh, says NAM3 masked K and I. And then you select all the three files. You This is the key step. You need to all select the file before masked the file after being masked and then the uh, imputation data generated from the masked file, select all three of those, and then you can calculate accuracy from there. So the option is under the impute, it, impute dropdown menu, you click to evaluate imputation accuracy. And um, so uh, here you can click impute it is subset of original as we done. Uh, because the uh, the maxed uh, genotypes are part of the original data set and click OK and will show you the error rate. Uh, so I'll uh, show you in TASO then. So first we need to mask the original data. Click on NAM3, the original data, and we go to 
data drop down menu, you find mask genotype. And we choose the percentage here, which is we can just use the default uh, 1%. And click OK. You can see there's uh, more missing data here in the masked uh, data set. And then as this masked data set is clicked, selected, we can do imputation, still using LD, Canon, and I using the default uh, parameters. Click OK. And then that will generate another um, imputed file based on the masked data. So there's almost no missing, missing data here. Then the next step is to select all three files, the original data. So when you do the selection, um, you can uh, uh, press control button uh, while you do the selection. So you can select multiple files here. And then you can click impute and choose evaluate imputation accuracy. And check this box here, impute it a subset of original. Click OK. That will give. Let me try this again. OK. Here we go. This is the error rate. So uh, it's about like 2% uh, of uh, error rate. Um, I would say it's uh, pretty good for, for this data set. Um, yeah, so that, that is the demo for uh, checking uh, imputation accuracy and now I'd like you to try this on your own. Um, just following the steps here, I'll show you. I can show you multiple slides. Uh, just following the steps here, since you already have the NAM3 uh, data set imported at Tintassel, just um, do so first mask uh, your file original data and then uh, do the imputation and calculate imputation accuracy. Let's see. Well, do this for let's shoot for eight minutes or so and feel free to ask us questions. Would you mind re-explaining the masked data part of the process? I don't think I understand what that means. Right, yeah, so uh, the purpose of masked the data is that uh, so originally we have um, some missing data, but not a lot. And if we want to do the uh, calculate imputation accuracy, we want to so mask some data. We already have the genotypic information. So say I know this site is AA, and that site is uh, TT or AT. And then I mask them. I pretend I don't know. And then I do the imputation. Uh, and then, so after imputation, the, the result is uh, CC instead of AA or TT instead of uh, uh, AG. Then I can do a comparison. If the imputed results match um, the, the information I, I know, but I pretend I don't know, then the imputation is correct. The, it doesn't match. The imputation is not correct. So that's the way of knowing how accurate the imputation is. Yeah, that, that, that's really helpful. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Um, 
just a question about like when you when would you report your imputation accuracy? Is that pretty standard? Anytime you do an imputation, is that you need to report how accurate it is? Uh, not necessarily, uh, but for some uh, imputation validation papers, if you want to compare different algorithms, that's a standard strategy to go. Uh, if I want, I have, say, I have the numerical imputation algorithm and I have uh, um, the fill in, and then I have Beagle. I want to find out which one is more accurate and, and want to ma write a manuscript on that. And I, that's the way to go uh, to test the accuracy and report the accuracy so that I know, okay, this is the recommended algorithm to use. But if it, you only want to do it for your own analysis, uh, um, I would say it's a helpful information to include, but it doesn't have to be necessary. Thanks. Looks like there's another question in the chat. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I saw the question from Nico. We're supposed to get the same numbers that you did. Um, I think as long as the numbers are similar, it, it's reasonable. It doesn't have to be uh, exactly the same. The, the two times I run, it, it, it's off by a little bit too. So I, I think like during the imputation process, their, the results might vary a little bit by each run. Mm -hmm. I'll show you the slides. So the first step is to mask genotype. In the data drop-down menu, click mask. And then do imputation in the impute drop-down menu. And then you select all three files. And in the impute drop-down menu, click evaluate imputation accuracy. Is everyone able to get it calculated, get it work? Yeah. Good. I saw uh, several sum ups. Yeah. 
Um, so, um, if you have questions, feel free to ask uh, anytime. And so if, uh, if we're all uh, done, maybe I'll just um, use uh, additional time to, to talk about how to use TASO in terminal. So uh, previously we talked about uh, using TASO with a graphic interface. And just uh, one thing to add, I uh, forgot to, to mention that. Um, so the functions are ordered based on this uh, function manuals on top and most of the file conversion and genotype data editing tools are under data dropdown menu, imputation tools are under input and filtering uh, functions are under filter. And it can be used for both genotypic and phenotypic data and analysis tools such as for diversity, relatedness and association, these tools are organized under analysis and there are some like um, uh, tools to uh, generate table and charts uh, to uh, dis display results in the results. And uh, GBS tools are under GBS V2. And this GBS uh, pipeline is no longer recommended. And so there's a, a strike through uh, uh, across the name. And then there's some a workflow uh, to combine some of the uh, steps uh, in in a uh, in one workflow, and some other additional functions. So, uh, you're welcome to explore um, additional functions of TASO by just simply going through the functions in the function manual. And uh, whenever you have a question, usually, if you just click on one. Uh, one function here, it always have the help uh, manual here uh, where you can find uh, more information of the parameters. And then you can also uh, access the user manual by click uh, clicking user manual here. So overall, the graphic inter interface is a very uh, intuitive and very helpful. So you can uh, find a lot of information uh, by going through it, uh, the pieces um, uh, here. Um, but uh, in, in, on top of the uh, graphic interface, TASO can also be run uh, in terminal as command line tool. And sometimes that can be helpful as well. Uh, for example, if you're working in an R environment and you want to um, do the analysis all in the same place without uh, having to switch from one software to another and have to click through files, uh, you can use TASO in R terminal. That's very handy. And the other nice th thing is if we use R terminal, uh, uh, so on Linux, on Windows machine, you can still like access terminal with like uh, Linux or Mac. So that's uh, pretty handy. Uh, so we can do file conversion uh, in terminal uh, through the command line. Uh, so one single line would uh, be sufficient. And uh, the, uh, there's a very detailed uh, document on how the syntax works for command line uh, function. So it's in the uh, user menu, uh, user menu, so enter user, there's a pipeline command line interface. Uh, you can uh, download the uh, document and uh, introduces the general syntax and also a lot of uh, uh, options and names of the plugins uh, in TASO that you can use. So there's, that's where you can find additional information, but. Uh, just to demonstrate how can we convert file using command line. So the first thing is before we want to use command line, remember to add TASO to your path. So you can find information on how to add TASO to your path uh, uh, by Googling it, how to add a software to your path. And 
After that's done, you can directly call Tesla wherever you are on this computer. So uh, it you, uh, always starts with run um, pipeline.pl. And uh, this is just simply to call Tesla to run the analysis. And to, uh, to convert file, we can convert HapMap to VCF, we can use dash H uh, to specify uh, the input file type. It, it just tells Tesla the input file is a uh, HapMap. And then we provide the name of the file um, and this dash export uh, should uh, specify the output file name and uh, dash export type specify the output file type. We specify it as VS VCF, or we can uh, write it plain or head map, uh, any uh, format that's supported by Tesla would work. And similarly, this is how to convert VCF to head map. So still starts with the run pipeline and then dash VCF to tell uh, Tesla the input file is VCF and the file name and uh, to export, uh, add, uh, to provide out file name, uh, output file name and to add a uh, specified output file type here we uh, use HapMap. So this is the uh, syntax for doing that. And we can also impute with LD Canon I using command line. And by doing that, uh, say if we take a VCF file as the input, so input type is dash VCF, and then specify the file name. And then we use the LDKNNI imputation plugin um, and end plugin. So this part is just simply to call the LDKNNI imputation algorithm. And then the last part, we specify export uh, out file name. This is the out file, output file name and output file type. Uh, we use VCF or you can use HapMap. So this is uh, some uh, an example of how we, the syntax we can use. And so uh, now I'd like to show you uh, a demo how I do it that in our terminal. So, and on top of uh, uh, convert the file uh, format within Tesla, I also shared some R script to convert a CSV file into VCF or into HapMap. So, this uh, sample input file. I have the SNP ID from them, uh, position re reference uh, alternative value. This is usually uh, information you can find and very commonly uh, find from your genotyping output. And then in this example, I assume the genotype uh, is uh, written in the A, A B, um, system. Uh, for example, if A, in this example, A uh, represents the reference allele and B stands for the alternate allele and AB is the heterozygous genotype. So if I have the genotype for all the lines for, uh, in each column, and this is, would be the simple format uh, I can use to convert to VCF or uh, HapMap. Don't save. So I can show you the example here. So this is the R code. And first I just set the directory to the uh, current directory. Oh, and now change working directory. Try this one to source file location. And, and then I'll need library tidyverse and string R for the two functions uh, I use in the source file is the file conversion source dot R. 
So that, that source file contain the two functions uh, I have. So one function is simple to have. So it uh, convert the, uh, what I call the simple format from the C CSV file to uh, HAP map. So you only need to uh, provide input file name and output file name. So here the out input file name is uh, example uh, simple format .csv and output uh, file name, I call it example .hmp.txt. And then I run it to convert it to heap map. If we see the folder here, we have this uh, heap map file. And then we can do that for VCF. So I specify a different file name for output. And I provide the input file name, output file name for the simple to VCF function, run it. It gives me a VCF file. So uh, this script I wrote, it's sufficient to generate the right format for Tassel. It's in case you don't have uh, HapMap file or VCF file to uh, a loading Tassel, you can use this script to convert a um, text file or CSV file into the format. It's just sufficient to yeah, the file in the right format for Tassel, but um, usually the ta it, uh, it might not work for another software if uh, the software is very strict on uh, a uh, certain format. Um, so if you uh, convert these, uh, these files, so you run these files in Tassel and generate another heap map or VCF file, that's always uh, more reliable. So, so my, my script is only like good enough to get it right for Tassel, but not necessarily for other uh, software. So then once we generated this VCF and HEPMAP file, we can test it, test the command line uh, option for Tassel to convert it to a different format. So I wrote the command line uh, code here. Uh, the first one is if we, if we want to uh, convert the heap map file to VCF using Tassel, I just type run pipeline. Oh, sorry. Should click terminal. So we should be able to find the terminal window in R Studio if you don't have it. Um, uh, simply Google it, uh, um, and uh, it's easy to set up. So suppose uh, it's already there. I just click run pipeline dot pl dash h uh, example hmp dot txt and dash export vcf. This is the file name I want to have for the output file. And then dash export type. I specify it as vcf and click return. Okay, let's see. So there's, there is it, Tassel vcf. So we convert it, the, convert the ish, hapman file into Tassel vcf. And similarly, we can do the same thing for to convert the VSAC file into heap map using this uh, line here. And uh, now, since we have Tesla VCF, uh, I can show you how to run it, how to run the imputation using the VSAC file. So I type run pipeline.pl dash VCF. And then use tesla.vcf, that's the input file. And then I use dash 
L D K N N I in mutation plugin. That's the tool for uh, K N N and I imputation and and plugin. So here I just use the default setting, but if you need to change any parameter, you can uh, add those options here, like uh, between after you call the plugin and before end the plugin, you can add dash the parameter name and, all, uh, and specify the value and that would do. And then export also dot UCF. This is the output file name I want to have, and then export tech VCF. So that's the format I want the output file to be VCF file. And uh, click enter. So it's done. And so uh, Tesla imputed VCF, that's the file after imputation. So um, if you uh, are, are more familiar or more comfortable to use command line, uh, this uh, would be very helpful. And also the nice thing about command line is when you run it, you are able to see the details uh, of these analyses. And if there's any error uh, or uh, problem, you can find um, it's easier to identify the reason for it. But in a graphic interface, uh, you probably will only see one error message towards the end that it doesn't work. Uh, but, uh, there usually is an error code, error code, but it's uh, more difficult to uh, to locate where the error occurs and why it occurs. Uh, so the command line uh, is a way for you to know how the process went and uh, where the problem is. So for uh, okay, so for this workshop, we won't go through this exercise, but. I have, uh, let me see if I have the GitHub page open. Um, I have uh, uploaded the example R code in this uh, folder, the file conversion demo R. Uh, so the, this is the uh, simple format, uh, sample data. This is the source functions or the two uh, R script I wrote to convert simple format to a head map or VCF. And this is the example code I just showed you. So it has the uh, uh, command line syntax uh, in there, command line script in there, uh, you can test. So yeah, I think that's all I have for this part. Um, Yeah, uh, let me know if you have any additional question. We have a little bit of time left before we take a break. Any other questions uh, for uh, imputation or conversion? So one thing I didn't show is how to use Beagle. We can manage to use Beagle in the same uh, environment in our terminal. So it, it flows very well. Uh, once you do the file conversion and you, you can impute either in Tesla or using Beagle all in the same environment. Uh, if any of you, if a lot of us are interested in uh, how to use Beagle, uh, you can let me know and I can put uh, together some slides 